There are approximately 4,500 asylum seekers and an even higher number of refugees living in Glasgow. The people that come to the UK looking for protection under the Refugee Convention are, are asylum seekers. Um, they make an application and the Home Office looks at the application based on the, the, the Refugee Convention. If you're recognised as needing protection, that's when you become a refugee. Human rights are for everyone. This includes both those who are born in a place and those who've just arrived. A human rights based approach means looking at policies and practices through a human rights lens. Realising human rights to things like health, housing and education is an ongoing process and when we take a human rights based approach we can think about redesigning and evaluating policies and practices in those areas from a human rights perspective. Having a voice is about participating, it's about empowerment and non-discrimination and these are all fundamental human rights values which help us to improve experiences of human rights in everyday life. Many asylum seekers and refugees suffer both from mental health problems due to trauma experienced before coming to Scotland as well as experienced while here. The main causes of poor mental health um, that affects refugees in particular is pre-migration trauma. This is usually caused by human rights abuses, um, dislocation from home and culture, and, and also the fact that they're running from wars. Um, when they arrive in Scotland, um, asylum seekers uh, face lots of worries and uh, uncertainty. A lot of asylum seekers have gone through a lot of trauma in their lives, a lot left their families, their children. This group uh, face similar mental health uh, experiences, just like the general population, such as poverty, um, uh, isolation, and, and also addictions. There's lots of research out there to say that the people that go through the asylum process, whether they have a, a negative decision at the end of it or a positive decision, continue to struggle with their mental health after because it's, it, it's a difficult process, it's traumatic. We're not mental health specialists, but we see lots of people struggling. The, the difference is that asylum seekers and refugees may not have similar understanding or awareness where services that help are located. So it's important to give this group um, uh, an understanding and more importantly a voice in forums where they can um, share their experiences. Asylum seeker and refugee voices are often not represented within schools' parent council meetings. The views that are dealt with with the parent council are things that affect the whole body, the whole student body. So, for instance, um, buildings, refurbishment, um, what's taught in classes, attainment levels, uh, fundraising, things that affect the whole student body or a large proportion of the student body um, is what a parent council deals with. Probably your best bet would be to go to the school office and ask them do they have a parent council or a parents group. They certainly have some sort of social media that you could maybe approach them that way. We work together and when we work together, the children are successful. We discuss everything from uniform to trips, yep. to curricular areas, to the school improvement plan priorities. It's parent friendly. There may be some terms that will pop up, but we try to kind of stay away from any jargon. If you have enough parents coming together, and certainly if you contact like your local councillor and get them involved, then you can really make a difference in some of the decisions, not even at school level, at local authority level. I would say probably the main uh, barrier would be language. We can always get an interpreter in. What we have tried to do over the years is to be flexible with our times. 
Often, asylum seekers and refugees are not aware of their rights and entitlements to health care. This can be a barrier to accessing services. The Carlton Engagement Forums is really just a group of people who come together who have an interest in either health and social work issues. You might have somebody that's coming through the community councils, somebody coming for integrated joint boards or drugs and alcohol. It's a whole host of things. Main aim is to provide people within information that they themselves can look into something so with the doctors, with the physios, whatever else it is. The key barriers are really, uh, for, most, for some people, it's work time. So we try and hold some of our meetings in the evening. The other barrier is the transport. The, the buses don't run after seven o'clock in many areas. We'll provide taxis for people, pick them up at their houses and bring them in. A wee cup of tea and a blather and a wee sandwich. Problems with accessing suitable housing can have a significant impact on the mental health and well-being of asylum seekers and refugees. The differences in entitlement for people going through the asylum process is that they are supported by the Home Office if they've got an active claim. Um, and, and that support is a subsistence support, so it's £5 a day on, on an Aspen card um, and the accommodations provided at no cost. Refugees um, are entitled to work, there's no restrictions on, on what a refugee can, can do in terms of work in terms of benefits, in terms of housing. Across the board, refugees' voices are, are not as well heard as they should be because people are, are rebuilding their lives and, and, that, and that period in which you have to rebuild your lives, you're starting from the beginning again. You're not starting from where you left. You have to go back to college, you have to go back to, to work in an environment you've never worked in before and in an education system that's totally new that doesn't always recognise your past qualifications. So the challenges for asylum seekers and refugees are double. The possibility of someone being homeless is a bit high because after 28 days you know you have to leave secure accommodation and apply through the local authority and often time 28 days is not always enough. They have to open a bank account, they have to have their passport and often time most of their passports have been you know, it's expired. Civic forums are a really good way to do that, to give people an opportunity to express their thoughts, feelings and aspirations to, to policy makers and decision makers. Some people like gardening, some people like, you know, arts and crafts, you know, if they know where they can go to do that, that will help them to you know, meet quite, you know, some other people, to socialise and also to integrate and be part of the local community. They do just want to be an island. Asylum seekers and refugee voices need to be heard. The new Scots strategy adopts a human rights based approach. It recognises the whole person and the impact interdependent factors can have on how a person feels, their health and well-being, and their opportunity to participate in society and to pursue their ambitions. The key principle of the New Scots strategy is that refugees and asylum seekers should be supported to integrate into communities from day one of arrival.